Hello and welcome to the Loving You interview series, conversations on self-love and self-care with well-being and holistic experts. I'm Rachel, your host and founder of Under the Dancing Tree School, Sacred Dance and Healing. And today I have with me the beautiful Ashley Levy, um, who I'm going to so a little bit about her first. So she's the founder and educational director of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. She teaches about using crystals to make positive changes for yourself, friends and family and clients. And she's also the author of many best-selling crystal books. And I'm super excited to have her here today. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I'm really very honored. And um, Ashley's a really amazing person, as well as like an expert on crystals. I met her in Glastonbury on when we were on pilgrimage together. And honestly, she knows everything about crystals. <laughs> when we go around the shop saying, what's this? What's this? What does this do? <laughs> she knows literally everything and has the patience of a saint. <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you here today. And I would love for you to begin sharing with our audience a little bit about you and probably explaining in a much better way than I could about what it is that you do. Sure. So my journey with crystals really began when I was a little girl. I was really blessed to be able to spend a lot of time with my grandparents and my grandfather was really into crystals and minerals, but from much more of kind of a scientific kind of standpoint, he was a chemical engineer by profession. So he collected crystals more and like cataloged them very scientifically and knew all about their chemical composition and how they were used in industry. And we would sit in his study and he would show me his crystals and tell me about how they were used and where they came from. And I just remember being so fascinated by them. And it was something we really bonded over and connected over. And, you know, I still find that interesting today. Like when kids come into my crystal shop, the first thing they go to is always the crystals because they're so eye-catching and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, later that year that my grandpa and I first started to connect about the crystals, he gave me a book. And it was the Smithsonian Institute Guide to Crystals and Minerals. And I remember just pouring through the pages of that book and being so drawn in by all the beautiful photographs and learning about the crystals. But there were some really cool things in there about the lore and legend and history mm -hmm of how crystals had been used for healing and for magic and things that I didn't even know you could work with crystals for. It was a whole new thing for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was into them for a while and then I became a teenager. So I was like way too cool for everything, you know, <laughs> and thought that was like little kid stuff. But in my late teens and early twenties, I really started to kind of reconnect with crystals. And I was at this point of a big, uh, crossroads in my life trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself as so many of us are in our early 20s and you know where I saw myself going and I decided that I was going to get back into crystals as kind of a touch point for my spirituality I'm really kind of a tactile person mm -hmm. I like touch mm -hmm. and hold things and crystals are great for that mm -hmm. so I ended up taking um, my first professional crystal training after, you know, of course, reading tons of books and watching YouTube videos. And this was like back in the mid 2000s when like everything was all grainy and terrible. <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> find very much on crystals yet, but um, it was a really exciting time for me. And I took that first crystal workshop and I had the most profound experiences and uh, it was something that really changed me. And I knew this was something I wanted to share with others. I wanted everybody to have that experience that I had had. And crystals became a big support for me in the following years. I had struggled with anxiety um, for quite some time. And I found that working with my stones just really helped get me centered and calm and focused when I would feel anxious. Um, I was later diagnosed with a genetic heart condition that caused me a lot of problems. And of course, you know, I was seeking regular uh, professional medical care through my doctor, but on the side, things that I knew I could do for myself were work with my crystals. And that really kind of helped with my own personal transformation. So I started a crystal healing practice. You know, kept can taking lots of training and things. And I thought I want to help other people, but I found the part that I enjoyed the most out of those one-on-one -on -one interactions with clients 
was at the end getting to share a few things that they could do with their crystals and empower them to work with crystals for their own self-care rather than coming and relying on me as a healer. Like, I feel like that's your job as a healer, like empower other people mm -hmm. to really work on things for themselves. And that naturally evolved into teaching for me. It was something that I just loved doing. And um, so now I have an online school that helps people all over the world learn about crystals and I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. Fabulous. Wow. So it sounds like a really incredible journey. And I'd love to know what you would say to people that I, I think a lot of people kind of know about crystals you know they're almost like an, an everyday thing so i imagine most people who are listening to this have got a crystal somewhere in their house and like you know the rest of us they probably would go into one of these you know hippie style shops and see this big kind of like almost like pick a mix of different you know stones and you're like these beautiful gems but maybe they're not quite sure about how they work as a as a well-being tool you know so can you maybe give some insight into what do they do and why why them <laughs> yeah so crystals are really amazing because they have a specific and precise geometric arrangement this um, perfect stable structure it's very orderly the way that their molecules and atoms are arranged and the way that crystal healing is thought to work is that by taking that perfect stable structure that stable vibration from the crystal and bringing it into your own energy field, which as we all know, is not so perfect and stable and structured. It can be a little chaotic at times. That our body starts to go through the process of entrainment because the crystal's frequency um, is very strong. Crystals are natural amplifiers of energy. We can see this in the way that a quartz crystal is used in a watch to keep time or in the way that a crystal coating is used on a computer's memory chip to store data. So crystals can receive, store, and transmit energy. And because they're able to do that, when we bring them into our field, our body entrains to that natural frequency or vibration of the crystal and it brings us into balance and alignment. So in crystal healing, we usually place crystals on or around the body in something called a crystal layout, but you can really do this not just with a healer, but in your own personal journey to self-care as well through things like carrying a crystal with you. Your bra is a great place to tuck one in. It's like an extra pocket. Um, or just in your trouser pocket, or carry one in your handbag. You can hold them in meditation. You can create beautiful geometric patterns and arrangements of them called crystal grids. You can create vibrational sprays or essences with your crystals, of course, following some safety guidelines. But really there are kind of these innumerable ways that you can work with the energy of your stones to connect with those frequencies and help bring yourself back into that place of balance. Mm. Fabulous. So they're really, yeah, really diverse, aren't they? And like a, a multi-use tool. So are there any crystals that, you know, for any beginners out there that want to add them to their self-love and self-care toolkit? Are there any like kind of ones that are kind of, yeah, really that you would recommend for those themes in particular? Yeah, so there are quite a few that I love. Rose quartz, I think, is universal for self-love and self-care. It's also really easy to find and quite affordable, which is really nice. Some of the crystals can get a bit pricey. So if you're just starting out and you want to kind of experiment without making like a huge investment, just look for a nice tumbled or rough piece of rose quartz. This has a natural connection to the heart chakra. It's an amazing heart opener. It really helps you get centered and focused on the present moment. I think a lot of times when we neglect our self-care, it's because we're just not being mindful of how um, we're feeling emotionally or what our body needs. And so by having that rose quartz crystal is kind of a physical touchstone and reminder just to take a moment and breathe deep and check in with yourself. It really goes a long way to kind of helping you um, identify what your needs are and be more in tune with that. Also, there's pink opal. Pink opal uh, usually comes from Peru, from the Andes Mountains, and it has a very sweet energy. This is one that's so nurturing. It's like getting like a big hug from Mama Gaia. And so if you just want to feel really connected 
with earth energy and how you are a part of that. I mean, so many of us think of the way that we treat the earth. We love the earth. We respect Mother Earth. We care for her as, as best we can. And Pink Opal reminds us that we can do that for ourselves as well. So it's that really nurturing and supportive energy. And then there's kind of a newer crystal on the market that's from um, quite a few places. You can find it from Argentina, sometimes Bolivia, but it's called Pink Amethyst. And this is a piece of it. <laughs> and I love this crystal so much. Um, it's pretty like new. They've just found it in the past few years. And this is another one that's great for self-care work. Just having it in your environment helps create kind of a sacred space and just anchor in that energy of self-love and self-care. Because I think Sometimes we get caught up in these, um, you know, images of what Instagram tells us <laughs> we have to have in order to have a self-care day or a self-love day. And we think everything has to be so perfect and orderly and we need this, you know, set aside pristine meditation room in order to take care of ourselves. And it doesn't have to be that. And that's what I love about crystals. They're really easily portable and you can do your self-care wherever you are. And it's really just about taking those moments to pause and turn inward and kind of listen to yourself um, and see what might help you in that moment. Um, I personally love working with crystals as part of my journaling practice. I'll just sit and hold them for a few moments. And every night I do a little bit of journaling, kind of reflecting on my day. And I also make a list of five things that I'm grateful for from that day. And I think that crystals really kind of anchor me into that moment as I'm going through and doing that practice. And then I like to quite often just before bed, hold my crystal while I'm thinking about those five things that I'm really grateful for and just kind of hold space for that in my heart. Mm, yeah. Thank you for sharing all those really wonderful ways, you know, that are, are really accessible. It's been a, a running theme in these interviews that as women, we kind of, we set these really high standards and almost kind of perfectionist about anything that we do. Um, and when it comes to our self care and our self love, it's almost, it feels kind of beyond reach. You know, it's something that we can provide for others and make it priority. But when it comes to us, you know, we kind of think, okay, right. I need to, you know, do these 10 things before I even have my breakfast, you know, and it, it looks like this and it looks like that. And, we are told, you know, by social media, especially that it should look this way and look like that, but we're all so unique, you know, and every one of us needs different things and needs different things at different times as well, you know? So I think crystals are a really amazing toolkit because there's so many, you know, and you can reach for different ones depending on how you're feeling, I suppose, you know, and kind of what you need in that moment. So one day it might be rose quartz and then it might be something else, you know, a different day. Is there one in particular that has really supported you on your self-care and self-love journey? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I will tell my favorite. <laughs> Shh, don't let them hear. <laughs> oh, we've lost sound. You've disappeared. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, you're here again. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I'm getting a bit of feedback, though. Are you? Oh, no, it's good now. Good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So for me, um, one of the crystals that's been a big support on my journey, even though I, I don't know if I could call it, it is a favorite, but I can't choose one favorite. I have many favorites, um, is aquamarine. That's one that in particular really helped me with my anxiety. And so um, for me, holding an aquamarine, focusing on deep breathing, and then repeating a few personal mantras or affirmations has been something that I think has really kind of saved me in many, many moments of high stress, of overwhelm, of fear. And I think, you know, one thing that you said, Rachel, that really stands out is how so many of us are able to give and support and nurture others. But when it comes time to do that for ourselves, it's like only in those dire moments do we really get around to it. <laughs> Um, and so a crystal that kind of helped me overcome that tendency in my own life is lipidolite. It's another crystal that many people use to help with anxiety. And that's how I first got started working with it. But I found that it was so beneficial 
for helping me find more balance mm. because I, we were just talking before we started recording this interview for many, many years. I was so burnt out. I was working myself to the bone. I had no time with my family or friends, let alone for self care. And it was really unhealthy. Like even when I started out in the wellness community, this was still something I was perpetuating in my own life. And through that journey of working with lipidolite, I, for my anxiety, I came to see how it was prompting me to slow down, to not let it get to that point of fatigue, exhaustion, dramatic stress. And instead of treating my self-care time as something that was only to be done in emergencies, mm -hmm. to be a little bit more preemptive and a little bit more preventative in my approach to my self-care and make sure that I was creating more balance and harmony kind of all the time. Am I perfect at that? Gosh, no, but I'm so much better than I used to be. And I know that crystals have been one of the things that have really helped me make that change in my life. Mm, yeah, so it's really, we can often go down the route of kind of all or nothing, you know, that we, we kind of have a, okay, I really have to do it now because I'm having a health crisis. You know, that that's often it's kind of, we put it off and we put it off and until our body lets us know what we've been doing and often it is it is our body that kind of the one that kind of whatever things get dumped I suppose you know and and um you know as women we have a lot of and maybe well probably for the men on that are watching this as well you know kind of we don't just it's not about just what we eat but our environment you know the words that we say to our body you know it really it really takes on an awful lot and um it's so wonderful to be able to yeah just give it the gift of even just the presence you know of a, of a crystal and it's really in a world where we're so much kind of around technology and in cars you know we don't have that kind of maybe that connection that we had in the past you know to the earth and to the land and it's a really wonderful way i think you know of taking a part of mother earth around with us and having that nature connection even when it isn't possible because it isn't possible all the time to be sitting out on a hill with <laughs> no one around listening to the birds singing as lovely as that would be so yeah it's a really yeah really really lovely way to do that i think i love that you said that it's a great way of kind of looking at that connection to the earth through this piece of her and there are some amazing crystals to help you get really grounded and to connect with the earth and with nature um, thing like typical grounding crystals grounding meaning really rooting into the earth and into that energy to feel more stable to feel more secure um, to feel protected and strong in our bodies and in our minds and in our spirits. Some of my favorite crystals for that are black tourmaline, which mm -hmm. is a very common one for grounding as well as protection. Um, garnet is a beautiful red crystal and a lot of what you see in garnet in jewelry is a little brighter red or, or lighter red because it's a rhodolite garnet, but often we see um, in crystal shops, the little black cherry garnets, and they're very, very, very deep, dark red. I love those for grounding. Um, and then also things like ruby, petrified wood, I love because it's a fossil. It's amazing for ancestor connection. Uh, and it, you know, used to be a tree. It used to be mm this part of the earth, this living part, but it was slowly the organic matter in that tree was replaced with minerals, usually a quartz-based mineral like an agate or a jasper. And so you end up with this fossil record of that plant. And so it connects on kind of multiple levels that way. Mm, wonderful, yeah. So um, what I'll do is I'll go through this and I'll write down all of these ones that Ashley's recommending and I'll put them in the comments below this video as well. Um, but yeah, what really comes forward of all this is kind of, you know, we often see, like I was saying, crystals before as kind of like little sweets, you know, and they're, they're decorative, but we forget that they are actually from the inside of the earth, you know, they are part of her, you know, just like it'd be like taking, cutting our finger off and then putting on the mantelpiece, you know, <laughs> it's a bit gruesome, <laughs> but you know, it is actually part of the earth. And I think we, we forget, like with ourselves, we forget, we think that we are detached, that we are other when we are actually of, you know, we are made of the same stuff as those crystals. Um, and it's a really, yeah, it's a wonderful way yeah, to really reconnect. And it's so important to be constantly reconnecting and coming back 
to our essential self, you know, and they're not just an object or a lump of a rock, you know, they're kind of really our brothers and sisters, you know, on some level and our companions and we're here as stewards to look after them and in return you know, they contribute to us and it's I feel like a really wonderful way to be continuing and developing that relationship you know co-creation and collaboration and and yeah co-love and self-care and self-love of each other you know they can give to us and we can give to them which is really beautiful and this has been a that's been important for you know thousands of years. Think about how our ancestors revered the importance of stone. You know, mm -hmm. stone was used at Stonehenge, at Avebury, in the Great Pyramids. These are all places where stone was such an integral part of daily life and of special mm -hmm. connection and special times in life. Um, and I find that you know. The, the metaphor you used about it's like you know having a finger cut off this is an important thing to to think about and a lot of people will ask you know well these are of mother earth they are from mother earth is it really okay to like take them out of the earth and work with them this way and this is it's a challenging question and it's one that i think requires a lot of thought um, and a lot of deep consideration. And I do think working with ethically sourced minerals whenever we can is important. And you hear that term a lot, but we need to consider the environmental impacts of how our stones arrive to us. We need to consider the human impact, meaning are the miners who are mining these stones paid fair wages? Mm -hmm. um, and we also need to consider the impact that it has on the global economy and mm -hmm. its part in upholding kind of this economic system that we've all become accustomed to. And so many people say, well, I wouldn't work with a crystal because it's taken from the earth and I, I don't agree with it and I don't think it's right. And I totally get that. But we also need to consider all of the impact of everything in our lives then. I mean, the computers and cell phones that we all have have precious metals and minerals in them as well. And largely the minerals that we see available at like your local hippie shop or crystal shop are going to be byproducts of that. So no one's digging in the earth to find, you know, some little like fluorite crystal. Um, I believe you have some really beautiful fluorite crystals in Wales, by the way. Mm. No one's really, like, yeah, no one's like digging in the earth to get those specifically per se, but they're looking for other mineral ores. They're looking for precious metals, things like that. And then the other stones that come through are kind of just a, a side note and they happen to get sold on the secondary market. So, is this the greatest thing? No. But if we're going to consider the impact of working with our crystals, we really need to be thinking even bigger than that and the impact of everything that's a part of our modern lives. Um, so I think that there are ways to be really mindful in your approach to building up a little crystal toolkit for yourself uh, and making sure that you know as much as you can know about where your crystals come from and how they were handled or mined. Um, and also, again, that people are paid fairly for their work because that's not always the case. So just some interesting notes to kind of the darker side <laughs> of, of yeah. the crystal world and things to, to really consider. I think it's really relevant for the whole of, you know, modern society. I mean, just like crystals, the food that we eat comes from the earth. It's not, again, something that's in our cupboard, you know, in our local supermarket. It has been in the earth. It's grown. It's taken up her nutrients, you know, and it is of the earth. And again, you know, it's about consuming on every single level, you know, about how it's produced and you know how much we take and i was talking about this in my last interview we we're talking about essential oils and um, i don't know how we got onto it but i was saying about kind of like you know wheat allergies and i've had dairy intolerance for a very very long time and i believe that it's not necessarily milk that i'm allergic to but it's the way that cows are treated okay? it's the energy there that you know how how they're treated and what they're given and kind of the you know if you were 
treating something really, really badly. I mean, they've done this with plants, haven't they? You know, when you shout at a plant, you know, it kind of droops like we would, and then you give it happy thoughts and <laughs> and it grows. So it's just being really, really conscious about kind of yeah, just how how we're living. And this is really important for our self-care and our, our self-love, you know, is is having this consciousness and being really conscious about how much we need and what what do we take and when do we take it and it's just really kind of listening and not getting lost in I don't know if you want to call it conditioning but kind of almost this numbing out or not thinking you know and, and detaching from things and I really love that you brought that up because yeah I imagine it's a really difficult subject in the crystal world so you know that all about love and light no pun intended <laughs> but you know and you know there is this side of people will try to exploit in in every in every area and just being really yeah conscious so maybe researching who it is that you're buying from and yeah and where it's coming from and how much you need I mean do, do you need do you need all of this or you know maybe just really really listening and I know there's a wonderful element of you know working with the anything with the earth is about kind of asking them if it's okay you know and having that invitation first and saying mm -hmm. can I take this you know is it right for me to have this now and with, with anything you know like I've just started working with essences you know and it's like can you know can I take that and it's offering something in return as well so if anybody is feeling kind of that impact maybe on their body or their or in them their hearts you know about kind of maybe it's not loving to earth but i would really feel this contribute would contribute to me by having crystals maybe having that really open communication with the earth and the open conversation being really honest you know and asking yeah just asking <laughs> and I love that you kind of equated this a little bit with the food that we eat right i mean this is so interesting because uh, all of that really does influence our self-care. And I mean, think of the energy that you surround yourself with, that you take into your body. And just like there are really amazing local organically grown vegetables that are cared for deeply by someone who is a steward of the earth in your local community, there are also the large monoculture agricultural plots where it's all about productivity and not about nutrients and not about tending or caring for the earth or being a good steward. The same goes for the crystal industry. There are the crystals that are um, hand picked up from the earth, hand dug from the earth, that are carried out lovingly, treated lovingly, miners are paid appropriately. And then there's, you know, big strip mine operations. It's, it's, you're going to find the light and the shadow in this industry just as you would anywhere. And I think kind of keeping in mind, um, like the comparison for how our food is grown is a really good one when you're making your choices about your crystals. And you know, do I realize that there's a, a cost component because ethically sourced crystals cost a little bit more? Absolutely. And I think that's where what you were saying, Rachel, comes in so important. You know, if you aren't uh, in the place to have a budget to go buy those eth ethically sourced crystals because they cost a bit more, just like if you couldn't buy organic food from your green grocer, then maybe you take that moment to really sit and communicate with Mother Earth and ask her if this is okay because you need this medicine right now. And making an offering in return, I think, is so beautiful. Maybe it's, you know, committing to doing a little bit of sending some healing energy to Mother Earth once a month. Maybe it's physically giving an offering back to the Earth. There are, there are ways that we can do that. And I think when we nourish the earth because we are connected like you were saying we're not separate this isn't the other the earth is us and we are her and it's all connected when we do that act to give back to the earth it's important to really remember that in itself is an act of self-care definitely so if someone were to receive or to find a crystal and it became theirs is there a way that they could um i know we talk a lot about kind of cleansing crystals you know is there kind of like a easy to do you know because they're maybe they're concerned about you know who's been holding it and where's it come from is there a way to kind of 
bring it back into that connection, you know, where it came from and really into a lovely space for that little crystal to be. <laughs> you know, I think that there's a, a lot of call in like the modern new age crystal movement that there's specific ways we have to do cleansing, right? And like many of us are taught that this means cleansing by burning herbs like sage or Palo Santo. Here's the thing, you don't need to use anything special like that. You don't even have to use herbs. Those, I know there's a, a lot of concern, rightfully so, about using those sacred plant medicines, um, not only because of things like cultural appropriation, but also for the environmental impact of some of these uh, plant resources that are very limited. So there's a great way to cleanse your crystals um, and it's sound. Many people don't know this, but sound vibration is such a powerful cleanser. And in fact, things like bells and chimes are used in monasteries in the East. They've been used in feng shui for clearing energy. And so we can use them to clear our crystals as well. So I have a little chime here. Um, you can use any type of, I even have one on my desk that I keep. It's this tiny, tiny little bell, and I'll just shake it in the middle of the day if I need to clear a little bit off. But if you have a bell, a chime, a bowl, and this could be, even be a wind chime, anything that's like a nice sound that makes you feel good, it'll make your crystals feel good. So I love this method also because you can do a, a small group of crystals at once. So if you want to place all your crystals maybe out on a table, and then chime your chime until you intuitively feel your crystals have kind of shifted in their energy. And if you want to kind of hold them or hold your hand over them before and then after to see if you can tell a difference, that's kind of a fun experiment. But you just chime your bell. I usually do three times, but like I said, do this until it feels right to you. And I'll chime and let it go all the way until it's still again on its own. And then I'll chime again two more times to clear my crystals. And I love that method because it's fast and easy, it's really effective, and it's pretty darn affordable. Once you invest in even a tiny little bell, like the one I have on my desk, then you have it and it's there. And you can use this not just to cleanse your crystals, but to clear your space as well. Mm, that sounds fun as well. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I kind of got images of, you know, people taking their cracked crystals to the shower and singing in the shower. <laughs> you know what? I, I encourage you to try that. I encourage you to try that. It's, you know, a crystal bath is so great if you have a few little tumbled mm. stones, especially with like the rose quartz we were talking about for self-love and self-care. Create a little bath for yourself. Put a few drops of your favorite essential oil, a couple little tumbled rose quartz stones and sink your body into that. You'll literally be bathing yourself in this water that's been imbued with that energy of self-love and you get to bathe in all that self-love. Oh, that sounds really nice. <laughs> yeah, about even just having that, you know, that simple kind of, yeah, time of, of ritual and ritual can sound really kind of, um, you know, 10 people out at night sacrificing somebody, <laughs> but you know that it's just those simple things that we do every day. And again, coming back to this, expecting so much from ourselves, but you know, it can be just, you know, maybe making that a little bit extra five minutes for your bath to collect some herbs, put your crystals around, you know, it just, that, even that intention and that act, you know, it is self-love, you know, and you don't have to do it every day, it can be once a week, but you've done that and that's, that's really important. Fabulous. So yeah, we're going to be going away singing to our, <laughs> our crystals tonight. <laughs> I sing to my plants. I, I can't remember if it was one of these interviews. I let slip about my secret that I create, um, I create songs for like when I plant seeds, <laughs> I sing to the seeds. I mean, each flower has its own little, little song, which I'm not going to sing now for you, but, <laughs> but I'm sure every crystal's the same, you know, I'm sure they would, they would love to be sung to and just let it come through intuitively and, you know, do it on your own if it feels a little bit silly, but I promise that this nature loves us singing. I mean, listen to the birds, you know, they're offering that to us all the time, you know, and I'm sure they would, yeah, just love that in return. <laughs> I sing to my dog every morning as soon as I wake up. I go downstairs <laughs> after I do my little morning routine up in, at my altar, and I go downstairs and I put on some tea and I sing to my dog. So now I'm going to start singing to my crystals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
yeah and then get your you know your dog in as one of your well-being coaches you know you can have his own little little course in <laughs> <laughs> singing okay fabulous wow so much really amazing information there um yeah to just to take in and to really kind of digest and think about and um i really love for you to kind of as our final thing to share with our audience what is your absolute number one self-care and self-love tool for you um so it probably has something to do with crystals maybe but it doesn't have to be you know just like your thing that you default to that you just love i think for me it's my morning routine which is um very very simple you know rachel's talked a lot about the importance of sometimes just the simplicity in something and this usually takes me less than five minutes in the morning but before i go down and sing to my dog and have my my morning tea i have a little morning ritual so i wake up and i stretch in bed and i stretch out all my fingers and toes my arms and my legs and i just make sure that i'm nice and stretched out and I get out of bed and I come into my sacred space and I do this thing where I invite in the goddess. I invite the goddess to come in and be in my space and be with me throughout the day. So I ring my bells, I light some incense, I light a candle um, and I invite the goddess into my space. So I have a few little statues around of different goddesses. So I might call on one of those goddesses that I feel connected to that day. Or if I know there's something that I have to get done, then maybe there's a specific goddess that will connect and I'll ask her to come in and support me as I do that that day. So ring my bells to wake up the goddess, call her into the space, and then I'll light my candle and my incense as an offering. And then I'll usually sit and just focus on my candle for a few deep breaths. And sometimes if I'm in a hurry, this is just three breaths, um, but sometimes I'll sit and maybe it's five minutes of just kind of really focusing on everything that I want to feel and be for the day. And I really feel like taking even that five minutes in the morning to kind of set the tone is mm -hmm. such a, a positive influence on my mindset for the day. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of reminds me of what's important and it gets me in that space to create more of that balance. Because like I mentioned, I have a tendency to be a little bit of a workaholic and kind of burn myself out. Uh, so for me, this is just that reminder to kind of set my intention and hold space for that. And it's a beautiful part of my day. So, you know, adapt this however it suits you. Allow yourself to play and have fun and be guided by your intuition. But invite God or the goddess into your space. Enjoy um, that moment of focus and intention setting and giving a little offering and let that kind of guide you. Fabulous. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no matter how much we have time we have, you know, one minute, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, is always something that we can do. And this is what really this kind of um, this interview series has been about is kind of <clears throat> offering different options, you know, for your self-care toolkit. And do you go and listen to them all? Um, all the different perspectives and all the different people that have been sharing what they can do and some days you might feel you want to do something and something different the other day but if you know there's all these different options you don't have to be rigid or have that pressure on yourself you can add you know you make a list of things that take five minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes and then you've always got these options of you know all these different wonderful things that you can do to really nourish yourself as soon as you start up to remind yourself how wonderful you are and how amazing you are so thank you so much ashley for being here today thank you so much for letting me interview you it's been really wonderful and i'm going to put all the links below for ashley's school and her shop and everything else um, so you can go and check out her more and if there's any kind of questions that you have that you would like to ask then you can always comment below we can send them through to us as well if you want us to elaborate on anything for you. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. <laughs> and I shall see you all soon. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>